Illiteracy may be an enormous problem in America, but in theory at least, it's easy to remedy. We know how to teach people to read. We lack only the resolve. But what about the problem of, if you will, illiteracy? Those who can read, but don't. Two-thirds of adults do read well, but a dwindling percentage bother to take the time. As a culture, we're losing the habit of reading. We are exchanging long passages on the printed page for fragments of electronic imagery. That trend poses questions that are not so easily answered. We continue our evaluation with the end of reading. Since the time of Gutenberg, ours has been a culture of the printed word. Almost every human undertaking, politics, communication, education, even religion, has depended upon the written word. We have been a culture of reading. But today, all that is changing. Electronic images are replacing the printed page. As the medium changes, so do the people receiving the message. Uh, America has uh, moved away from uh, typography as the center of people's intellectual and social lives and toward a culture of imagery. What's the last book I read? I can't remember. I don't have the time to read books. What's the last book I read? I read, um... The written word no longer plays a, a, a central role in culture. And w with that being the case, we can assume and we can also see that every social institution will alter. Today, if one reads at all, it is generally a leisure activity, almost a luxury. But it was not so long ago that reading was a necessity. Americans were readers. Uh, uh, there is some evidence that the earliest Americans, at least those in New England uh, in the late 17th and early 18th centuries, were probably the most literate uh, collection of people that ever existed on Earth. Uh, for one thing, they had to know how to read the Bible because they were Calvinist Puritans and um, having access to the Word of God which meant the Bible, uh, was an essential uh, uh, feature of their lives. But today, of course, access to the Word of God is possible without reading, as is access to just about everything else. Reading is no longer a central fact in the symbolic environment of Americans. They, they uh, pursue their they can pursue their religion, they can pursue their politics, their education, uh, and their uh, commerce, as well as public information, via the television set, uh, without reference to uh, almost any other medium. Once the events of the world came to us daily on these printed pages, but newspapers, too, are being replaced by visual imagery. A major city like New York used to support 11 daily papers. Today, there are only three. If you look at USA Today, for example, which is our most successful uh, new national newspaper, you observe, first of all, that it's sold on the streets in receptacles that look like television sets, as if to suggest to people, don't worry. When you buy this newspaper, it'll be just like watching television. But beyond that, when you look at the paper itself, you can see uh, easily how much it's influenced by television. It's mostly a picture newspaper. Uh, the uh, stories are um, uh, very brief and economical. To the extent that newspapers remain popular, they are under increasing pressure from television to be entertaining, to be headline services, to cater to a public that appears to have an ever-shortening attention span for printed matter. As a matter of fact, one of the editors of USA Today was quoted as saying that he doubted that any of USA Today's reporters would win any prizes because they don't give awards uh, in journalism for uh, investigative paragraphs. Many experts in learning explain that television doesn't lend itself to critical thinking. It is passive, basically a medium of entertainment. The move from a typographic public discourse uh, to an imagistic uh, uh, public discourse uh, tends to trivialize all uh, forms of discourse, tends to make people uh, less aware, less intelligent, less reflective, less analytical. I mean, the, 
the best uh, evidence uh, of this uh, would come from uh, what we presently call political debates in America. For many, the Lincoln-Douglas debates represent political debate in America. Held in an era before television, the debates often lasted more than seven hours. Now, these were great social events in Illinois. People brought their children. They brought uh, baskets of food with them. Uh, this kind of uh, language was integrated into the social life of people. Uh, today, it would be, it's inconceivable that any group of Americans could endure seven hours of such discourse. Today's political debates are much shorter. Candidates take about two minutes to answer a question, 60 seconds to rebut. I am not going to exploit for political purposes my opponent's youth and inexperience. <laughs> When you look at how those, in quotes, debates were treated by the press, you see that uh, they were referred to as sort of uh, boxing events. Reagan KOs Mondale, or Mondale wins on points. Uh, afterwards, most of the commentary uh, concerned the style of the men. People said Reagan, in the first debate, looked unsure of himself or that uh, uh, later on he was, um, he looked good. Mondale looked uh, in the second debate um, uh, somewhat um, distant or, or aloof. Uh, I mean, these are the comments people make about what we presently call uh, political debates on television. Uh, content uh, is almost uh, insignificant, as any good television director knows. There are signs that education, too, is moving from the printed word to the non-print media. In this Philadelphia classroom, the rules of grammar are set not on the pages of textbooks, but rather to the rhythms of rap music. Students learn by listening rather than reading. to worry quite a bit about the negative influences that much of the media has on the uh, the images and concept that boys and girls evolve the tapes that my boys and girls are now using have had a really positive influence because it's something they readily can identify with it's exciting it's motivating and it stimulates them to learning Philadelphia disc jockey Jocko Henderson is credited with having invented rap learning. Those kids who are doing my program now, pardon my conceit, but they'll never forget it as long as they live. The kids who you say, who you hear saying three little words, we often see are articles A and and the a noun is the name of anything as school or garden house or swing they'll never forget it we didn't forget humpty dumpty or twinkle twinkle little star and they won't forget this either mm -mm. no way if the schools try to replicate what television does that is, if the classroom was just filled with visual stimulation and music and no, no discourse more than eight minutes and so on, then I think the game is up. Then, it, then it's a quite likely that, uh, except for very few people, most youngsters will be disabled from learning in any other way. As an educational force, could television become part of the solution, not just part of the problem? The people at Sesame Street think so. When I was doing the study for Carnegie that led to Sesame Street, I, I was watching a, a three or four year old niece of mine, and I noticed she was playing on the floor and not watching television except during the commercial, and then she'd whip around and watch the commercial. And parent after parent reported that phenomenon about the preschool child. And I said, hmm, <laughs> since it's compelling, since every child in America was singing beer commercials and so on, and were identifying words in supermarkets that they'd seen on, uh, it seemed pretty clear to me that, that, that the commercial technique could be used for something more constructive than selling them um, product, and that uh, it might teach them letters and numbers. One of the impo important dangers, perils, 
of the Sesame Street approach to education is that it teaches the young that entertainment and learning are inseparable. Now, I'm not speaking here in behalf of uh, ones being boring in the classroom, but it must be perfectly obvious to everyone that not all learning is entertaining, that there is uh, an arduousness uh, to, to learning some things. So I worry about Sesame Street because it, uh, it may be uh, uh, raising a population of youngsters who will have no patience for any rigor or uh, durability in the learning process. I think, with all due respect to Mr. Postman, I think he is actually wringing his hands about the late 20th century. I don't see television as perhaps the worst thing that's ever happened because I think given that it is here and that it's not going to go away, we ought to be seriously discussing how to make it safer, better, uh, enlightening. And I uh, am not going to apologize for Sesame Street. I think it was a step in the right direction. I wish that many, many other steps had been taken. That's my only regret. One thing that television has done is provide everyone with equal access to vast amounts of information quickly. That may seem like a wholly positive development, but it may not be. When you go into the classroom, when you go into high school classrooms and college classrooms, one is astounded at how much kids know it is one, one might say broad and thin but it is broad um, I think the in-depth learning has probably been hurt by by taking images in by t getting your information via visual images Gaddafi is a madman okay. you know, very void of any rationale oh Gaddafi is a frightening person I believe well Gaddafi needs to be taken care of yes I think there is much more of the illusion of knowledge that's what I meant by young people are smarter in some ways that their knowledge is broad but thin um, and and we are getting quick impressions you know what Libby is what? Well, geographically? Yeah. Like what street or something like that? Well, not what street, but just generally, where is it? Thank you. Generally, um, no, I couldn't tell you where it is. It's probably off of uh, Saudi Arabia. I, I absolutely, I don't know where it is. Somewhere over there in Asia. When a culture disdains literacy for the important uh, functions of public discourse and replaces that with uh, a medium that uh, focuses on format and style and therefore entertainment, then you begin to get, uh, you, you have a situation uh, comparable to what Huxley meant by the drug soma, that everyone is kept sort of pacified, amused, entertained. President Reagan Our is entertaining. Dan Rather is entertaining. Uh, the, 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 even the nightly news for all of its gory stories is entertaining because the film footage is exciting. Um, uh, the religion on television is amusing. The commercials are very amusing and, and uh, entertaining. So that as we move into this imagistic uh, uh, culture of short duration, dynamic and amusing images, uh, we have a population that becomes pacified, that no longer is capable of the kind of sustained reflection and analytical thought that I think is uh, usually characteristic of literate cultures where typography is vital to, to every day's functioning.